Hmm? Or are you, uh, Ken's watching live from the other side of the room. Excellent. It's like Inception. <laughs> All right. Um, Ken, what you'll find is that there is a delay between what I'm saying and what is happening there. <clears throat> But it should it should only be a few seconds, I think. Maybe the longer the live stream goes, the longer that delay gets. Yeah. This this is going to be a famous owl here. Yes. For those that are tuning in, including Ken from the other side of the room, uh, we have an owl for you. And um, uh, we're very pleased. We just got back from our 8:45 net check. Um, we have one sawat owl that we caught in the net. Um, so we're delighted to share this with you. Um, we're going to wait for folks to kind of retune into our, our live feed here. It takes a few minutes for people to find their way to the link. Um, so what we're going to do before I take this owl out is get everything ready uh, because we want to minimize the amount of stuff that we have to do um, while the owl is out. And I want to maintain my dexterity with both hands. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get the band ready um, to put on this owl once it does come out. So um, on this string, of bands that I have here are um, a sequence of numbers. And I'm gonna read this off to Ken, who is recording on the other side of the room here. And it is 11042261. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. So um, then we, and I'll actually see if this actually works. Um, I'm gonna attempt to show you what this looks like close, maybe. Oh, hey, that actually works great. Uh, somewhat. So these are the owl bands, and each one of them has numbers that are stamped into this into the aluminum here. And you know, usually it's more in focus than this, but uh, I promise I can read the number. Um, so we'll take the band off. We have these, these special pliers that are designed uh, that have a hole in them that is, um, matches, matches the diameter of the band that we're using. And the band matches the diameter of the tarsus of the bird. So I'm gonna use the pliers to, to open up that band and take it off the string like this. And I'm gonna put them in the pliers here to kind of load this and get it ready to go um, while I take the owl out here. So um, this uh, is our owl caddy. This is what we use to safely transport the owls from the nets back to our banding station here. And the other option that one could use for this would be a bird bag, which is like a pillowcase um, that's sized for a, excuse me, a small bird. Um, but the problem with the pillowcase is then you have to reach your hand into it and get the bird out. And these things have very sharp feet. And so we opt for this, this style here because it keeps them contained, keeps them comfortable. Um, and I can see right where the talons are so they don't surprise me. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna back the owl out of, the, um, out of here. And oh, by the way, feel free to, uh, uh, to throw questions in the chat bar as we do this. So I'm just gonna pull on the tail and wing feathers a little bit just to back it out of the can. And I'm grabbing it behind the legs here. And the big reveal. This is a Sawat Owl. And these guys spend most of their life in places that don't have people around, you know, up in uh, uh, boreal forests of Canada. They migrate through into the and the southern Appalachians, and they spend uh, their time being active at times where people aren't around. And so they're surprisingly um, comfortable and relaxed around us. If you can hear that click, click, clicking, um, that's the sound of uh, clicking its bill together, which is a little threat display. He's this owl is saying, "Careful, I'm a I'm a monster." Um, so I'm gonna hold his leg out, and I'm going to um, go ahead and put this band on its leg. Switch my grip on this guy. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm going to hold a leg out. Take a bend under the tarsus, close it down part way. And then I'm going to rotate the uh, band around like this so it gets all the feathers out of the way of the band. I'm not pinching any feathers pose in there. And then we'll close it down the rest of the way. So the band is on. This bird will now forever be known as 11042 something something 61. So now we're going to take a few measurements on this little guy. And um, <laughs> uh, Sandy's asking oops, what keeps the owl in this contraption. And um, simply, the, all the feathers on a bird, just like the hair on your cat, all point the same direction. Um, and so we put the bird face in and just the contouring of its feathers makes it, so it doesn't want to back, it just can't back itself back out on its own. And it's nice and snug in there too. Um, so it's, you know, if we held the can upside down, the owl is not going to fall out. It's, it's, um, it's uh, confining without it being constricting, if that makes sense. All right, so uh, next we're going to take a couple of measurements. And the first thing we're going to do is take a measurement of the, the wing length of this bird. So to do that, I'm going to, sorry, I keep looking off screen, making sure what I'm doing is actually on screen for you. Ooh, this is an interesting, interesting age. Um, so we're going to put the bird's wrist, this is the wrist here, um, into this uh, special ruler. And this bird's wing length is 136 millimeters. We're going to take two measurements, this wing length, and then we're going to take the weight of the bird, just like Zach did in the video earlier, if you're watching that. And um, we take these two measurements to figure out if a bird is a male or a female. Female owls, just like most birds of prey, are always bigger than males. Um, and enough so that usually with a combination of wing and weight, we can tell definitively if it's, if it's a male bird or a female bird. So we have our little scale here, and this is a tomato paste can. Also, here's a public service announcement. If you have any tomato paste cans, please bring them to North Branch Nature Center because we need to make another one of these um, uh, to, um, so that we can have a second owl caddy. So keep your uh, tomato paste cans. Hmm? There you go, 100 tomato paste cans. If we get 100 tomato paste cans, that's fine with me. Yeah. So owl goes into the tomato paste can. Again, nice and constrict, uh, confining without being constricting. Put it on the scale. This owl weighs 88.4 grams. What do we say, 136 wing? Yep, and a female. So that combination of weight and wing makes this a female. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is, and again, I'm, I know that you can't see this owl terribly uh, ergonomically right now, but I'm trying to uh, reduce the number of times I have to change my grip just so that the owl stays nice and contained. Um, and from this position, I'm going to uh, open up its wings. We're going to look at the age of this owl. Um, so um, birds molt their flight feathers and they molt them because over time flight feathers get worn down and they get broken and whatnot. And so they replace them so they can fly better. And different species of birds have different um, uh, patterns with which they molt and they molt over different time scales. And in the case of saw white owls, it takes them several years to make it through an entire molt of their flight feathers. They molt their feathers kind of one at a time, working the way from the, um, from, the, uh, from the outside to the inside. And so if this was a young bird, a hatchier bird is what we call it, it would have, uh, it hasn't even started its molt yet. It will be, every single feather will be exactly the same all the way through. If it's a second year bird, then it will have started its molt but it won't have finished it yet. So some of the feathers will be new and some of them will be old. If it's older than that, then it will have almost finished the first molt and it will actually have already started on its second molt on the other end. So we have, we'll have an uneven pattern of old, new, old, new kind of feathers. Um, so I'm gonna show you, and this should be an owl that you can actually pretty clearly see this even in, the, in a live stream video like this, that not all of these feathers are the same color. So you'll see the ones that are more distal, the farther out flight feathers are almost like a dark chocolate color. 
and the ones that are towards the middle are more of a milk chocolate color. And since there is a, um, a clear band of new feathers and then a clear band of um, older feathers, and then inside of that is another band of new feathers, this is a second year bird. Um, so this bird was born last year. Um, and so when we have a bird that has an interesting feather pattern, we actually write down the, um, the, the pattern of new old feathers. And so I'm going to uh, recite that to Ken here on the other side of the room. <clears throat> Uh, starting with the right. I think with this data sheet, we, we kind of write backwards in, right? Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six new feathers and four old feathers for the primaries. And secondaries are uh, four old and the rest are new. Now we're gonna switch over to the other wing. And I'll let you be the judge. At this very moment, I can't see your Facebook comments if you are writing any. So uh, just told you, well, you can throw it in there, but I may not respond right away. <laughs> um, but I will let you decide for, for us uh, what you see on this wing. You should be able to see that the outer feathers are also new. There's, an inner, there's a block in the middle of old feathers and the feathers on the inside are new as well. So the darker, more dark chocolate color there. So um, this, uh, this bird has the exact same pattern on this wing, on the other wing here. All right. Um, so we've taken the age. We've taken, oh, we have to do the cool thing with the, uh, the fluorescence. So I mentioned this in Zach's video too. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell whether or not we're looking at a, um, a new feather or an old feather. And, uh, and so we have a special trick we can use to, to determine that. And so here I have a um, black light. And let's see, I'm gonna put my mask up here so Ken can get a little closer to me. And I'll have you hold the black light, that's all right. And then um, Katarina, would you hit the lights next to you? Um, flip the horizontal one. Uh, yeah, that goes down. And then, oh, I guess that's it, okay. Um, so let's see if this actually shows up here. Let's see. So with the exposure on that camera of a fluorescent of a black light, uh, I think you on the on the audience end can't quite see um, exactly what I'm seeing here because to you everything just looks like a big wash of purple. Um, but for us, what we're seeing is uh, the outer feathers are distinctly pink colored. The inner feathers are not do not have that pink color. So these ones here are not as pink. But yeah, it's really hard for you to see that on. Um, on your end, just because of the, the the way the webcam is designed, can't really pick that up. Thank you. And um, so with that, that's all the information that we need to take from this bird. Um, so um, this bird is doing really well, and uh, it was really very lightly caught in the net. Um, it was, uh, and it wasn't in there very long. And so I'm comfortable holding this for for another. A couple of minutes while I show you some pretty neat things about owl ecology, because when else are you going to be able to see something like this? Um, so, um, uh, Ashley, I see you're asking how many owls we banned a year, somewhere in the order of uh, between 100 and 200. Uh, this year, thus far, I think we've banned it about 50 or 60, and we banned pretty much entirely in the month of October is when their migration season is. Um, so, a couple of things I want to show you on this owl before we release it. Um, one is we'll see if we can get it to look into the camera a little bit. And then what I want to show you is a little bit about the ecology of their, their face. So we all know that owls have this awesome uh, disc shaped face, right? And, um, and that flat face is basically a radar dish for capturing sound. And um, hopefully what I can show you here oops, is um, the ear canals of these owls. I'll bring the, I'm gonna bring the owl, oops. Owls flying through the screen. Um, I'm going to bring the owl up close to say hi. And um, behind this facial disc here is where the ear canal is. And on the other side over here is where the ear canal is. If I peel away the facial disc, 
I'm just doing this very, very lightly. It's not hurting the owl or anything. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm uh, giving me backwards in the camera. So you're looking down there into the ear canal of the owl. And then it's the same side, same, same thing on the other side. However, on um, sawets, um, um, actually pretty much all owls, since they hunt primarily by, by uh, hearing, um, one ear is going to be higher than the other, and one ear is going to be lower. One ear is going to be set farther forward, and one's going to be set a little bit farther backwards. Um, so if you look at the skull of an owl, it's actually asymmetrical where the, uh, where the, um, kind of the ear holes are. Um, and that's so it can triangulate its prey with kind of three-dimensional hearing. The final thing I want to show you about this guy, since you have him in hand, is I want to bring its wing up into the camera. Move for this. Yeah. What we'll do is I want to show you just this very first, that leading feather, the one that's on the top, top of the screen up here. I want you to see this like serration, almost this like sawtooth pattern along that feather. You can bring it against the contrast against my shirt. Yeah, so that there, that serration is the reason that owls fly silently. That creates a, that uh, flight feather creates a, a baffle so that air is not breaking loudly over that airfoil. <laughs> um, and uh, I see that uh, Mr. Francis Erickson there is asking uh, what other secrets are owls hiding? Um, the one secret that I think is pretty amazing on these guys is just, how, I mean, this owl is already small, um, but the fact that it is so dense with feathers that it's even smaller than it looks. And um, if I um, use my finger um, into the, the flight, the, into the feathers of this owl, you can see how deep my finger goes um, before I actually hit the bird's um, the skull. So very fluffy. Um, so this bird has been very cooperative with us, um, but I want to get it outside and release it um, because we want to minimize the amount of time that we're handling any wild animal. Um, and so uh, we're going to get her out and release. Um, I can't do this part on camera. And so what we're going to do is take her outside. We're going to uh, bring her into the darkness, let her eyes readjust to the dark for about a minute or so while we're holding her. And then we'll open our hands and she'll fly back away. Um, we've probably banded about 700 or 800 owls here at the North Branch Nature Center. We've never ever had one that was uh, injured um, from this from this process. So very safe, very healthy. Um, so we'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to leave the live stream going. So if anyone wants to ask any questions, we can answer them after we've let the uh, the owl go on our way. So be right back.
All right, I'm back, folks. Um, thanks for sticking with us. Be happy to answer a few of your questions while uh, um, while our owl is outside having its eyes uh, recalibrated to the darkness. Um, so um, let's see. I'm learning that I don't think I can actually have all the comments open at a time, which is surprising to me. Um, so if I if I if yours falls off the bottom that I can't see anymore, just ask it again. But I see um, uh, Susan's asking, is it possible to adopt one of the uh, captured solid owls? And it absolutely is. Um, we do an adopt an owl program here at the Nature Center um, where uh, if you'd like to adopt one of our owls, um, that entirely supports our research here. Um, and uh, we send you a adoption certificate with your owl's band number on it, a photo of a saw on it, um, the age, the sex, the weights, the wing cord, all the information we have about it. And then if your owl ever turns up again, either here or at another banding station, anywhere in, in the anywhere in the world, um, we'll know about it because this data is all centralized. And so we'll send you a note saying, hey, your owl just turned up in Ontario or in Maryland or something like that. So if you wanna um, do that, you can go over to northbranchnaturecenter.org and um, underneath the uh, community science tab is our, uh, our owl banding page. And on that owl banding page, you can go down and click adopt an owl. Um, also, if you want to, at, while you're at northbranchnaturecenter.org, you can sign up for our e-news um, e mailing. And we're gonna be sending out something to everybody on that mailing list just about the details for our adopt an owl program. So if you want to adopt one, please, uh, please, please do. It, uh, it makes all of this possible. So um, Mr. Francis Erickson is asking, not exactly a scientific question, do owls enjoy being pets? And um, you know, as a, uh, as a scientist, as a researcher, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not anthropomorph, like I'm trying to not treat these animals as though they are a pet dog or a pet cat or anything like that, because these are wild animals. Um, we, our research process is designed to hold them uh, for as little amount of time as possible. But when something is that fluffy, it's hard to not pet it. And the owls really don't seem to be bothered by it. Um, and so in some cases, I'm, I'm not even, we kind of forget that we're even doing it sometimes. Um, but, uh, but it's good to be um, reminded um, uh, that we're doing it because some things that we just kind of forget that we're, sometimes we just forget that we're, we're giving them a little pet here and there. But yeah, they, they um, as Sandy points out in the next question, they do not seem to be stressed at all. And that's absolutely the case. You know, these birds are, you know, this is not their favorite day, of course, like no owl wants to be caught in the net and brought inside and bothered by humans for 20 minutes. Um, but, uh, but they do not visibly uh, appear stressed out. They're not shaking, they're not, um, they're, not, they're not freaking out, they're not struggling really in any way. Um, once in a while, there'll be a bird that's feistier than others. Um, but the bird that we just processed um, together was, is, is a very common example of the, the type of animals that we encounter here. Very calm, very relaxed. Um, now birds, um, birds are kind of renowned for being able to uh, hide their stress. And so sometimes you encounter a bird that's just been, you know, just hit a car window or just hit a house window or just got attacked by a cat or something like that. And you look at it and it seems totally fine. Um, but then three hours later it dies. Um, and so it, it can be really difficult to tell if a bird is under stress just by looking at it because they hide that really well as animals that get preyed upon by other things. Uh, it benefits them to, you know, keep that stiff upper lip to not show that stress because um, it may maybe perhaps com, uh, come off as a weakness or something like that. Um, so it can be hard to tell if a bird is stressed or not. Um, they certainly don't appear stressed to us. They don't feel uh, stressed. They're not struggling. Um, but nevertheless, we know that they are not having a good time compared to what they'd rather be doing out there. And so for that reason, we handle them gently. We are all very carefully trained in this process and uh, we release them um, as soon as we can uh, in this process. Um, let's see, Ashley is asking, are the owls released in the same location they were caught? So they're not, re we, um, the distance between the, the nets and the nature center where I'm, where we're watching this together here is about a quarter of a mile. And um, from the steps here, I can hear the broadcaster uh, that's attracting the owls. Uh, we don't want to bring the owls back to the nets and release them there because then they'll just get caught in the net again. And so we release them right here from the porch of the nature center. Um, these owls are migrating anyway. They're on their way south. They're moving. So they're not on territory. They don't need to be brought back to a nest or anything like that. So we release them from the porch and that's, that's totally fine.
I'm just trying to get into the other comments here since I'm having a kind of a hard time seeing some of them for whatever reason. I'm not seeing some of the earlier comments on the on this live stream. Um, so if you have any questions, please throw them in uh, now. Um, oh, the broadcast. Thanks, Sandy. You asked a question. What is the broadcaster that you mentioned? So I actually have one in here to show you um, an example of, of the type of thing that we build. Um, these are custom built things that we've made out of basically junk parts because it's you can't really find something that suits the bill perfectly for what we're trying to do. Something that's weatherproof, something that can get dewed on and frosted and has that and something that's really loud um, and carries the sound quality well enough. And so uh, we basically have um, home built these um, these um, boom boxes. And the way these are designed is this is this particular one is is an ammo box. Another one out that we have out there is just a, a toolbox. Um, but inside this is a um, an MP3 player. So this just has the the call the saw what owl. It's a two minute um, two minute sound clip that we just have on repeat. And that is plugged in to um, all the the guts of this thing. And in here we have two um, two big. Uh, these are like Radio Shack megaphone speakers that are fixed into holes that are cut out of the side of the box. And then um, there is a set, in this case, is a set of uh, 8C batteries. Um, the broadcast that's out there in the woods right now has like an ATV battery on it. It's like an all-terrain vehicle battery. So it's like a mini car battery, uh, but 12 volt battery. And then also here, uh, this is a and this one's a little amplifier. Um, the one outside has actually the same kind of amplifier you put in a, in a car radio uh, just to broadcast the sound. And uh, yeah, and so this is the, the setup that we have out there. They're ear splittingly loud. Um, when we have this on, you don't wanna have your head next to it. It can be kind of deafening. Um, so we try to have it loud, but also we remember that owls can hear a lot better than we can. And so we don't wanna have it so loud that it damages the hearing of the owl that's caught in the net next to it. Um, so it's a, it's a fine line to make sure that our decibel levels are correct. Um, let's see, uh, if Jim, if you're still watching, uh, hi. And I see your question from earlier. Is there a website you can go to to see their migration patterns and track where they're found by other owl banders? Um, there's not a there's not a centralized uh, website where you can go to kind of uh, uh, track this stuff in real time. Um, you know, we have this. <coughs> excuse me. Um, our birds here at the Nature Center. We have our own map that we put up on our website and we update it every year. Um, but if you come across a banded bird, um, whether it's an owl or whether it's anything else, um, you can go to the Bird Banding Lab website and you can report the band. And they have a whole portal for this. You just put in the band number. If you know what species it is, you put in the species and you hit submit and it will automatically generate and give right back to you a certificate that says when that bird was banded and where and um, any information about that bird, who banded it, um, all, all that kind of stuff. And so you can get in real time information back on if you recapture a bird. Um, but in terms of um, a kind of a, a live map of this sort of banding data, doesn't quite exist. The closest thing would be um, eBird, eBird.org. And eBird.org, um, there you can actually uh, watch um, kind of live maps of uh, different species as they're migrating through and being picked up on different people's uh, eBird birding checklists. So when people are out um, bird watching, they submit their data to eBird and that data is collated and, um, and mapped across the whole country. And you can actually see hot spots of different species um, flowing across the country like water almost as for instance, all of the black-throated green warblers make their way south along the Appalachians. You can actually see that track in terms of people's uh, eBird hotspots, uh, it's hotspot maps. So check out eBird.org if you wanna see some of that. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, Glenn, good to, good to hear from you, Glenn. Uh, what is the latest date in the year that you have heard or seen a sawat owl in Vermont? Um, so great question. So the migration season here typically is over by about the first week or second week of November is when things are kind of straggling through. Um, so that's when we'll stop um, our, our 
our setup here. However, there are some sawed owls that actually do overwinter in Vermont. Um, so it's not, it's not unheard of to um, have sawed owls on Christmas bird counts. I think there was one that overwintered in the Stowe area uh, last year uh, over in the Champlain Valley. Um, and so there are some of these owls that actually are migrating through and they just decide to stick here. And even though it gets very cold and snowy, um, apparently it's, it's fine for some of these little guys, um, but most of them are on their way south. So to answer Glenn's question more directly, um, the latest date in the year that we've heard or seen a sawed owl in Vermont, they actually do overwinter here um, to a small degree. All right. Um, well, with that, uh, maybe what I'll do is I'm going to do one more uh, uh, screen share here so I can just take you over to the North Branch Nature Center page. So everybody, if you want to uh, support our owl banding research, um, you can do so. Head over to northbranchnaturecenter.org, go over to community science and go over to our owl banding page. And here you can learn more about our work. You can see the map of where we've banded and re uh, where we've recaptured owls from uh, over the years or what banding stations have recaptured our birds. And um, you can learn a little bit about if you wanna come and visit us in person sometime, you're welcome to come uh, hang out with us and, and join us for a night. And then the adopt an owl stuff is down here. If you want to adopt an owl, there's some information about that and it makes a really great holiday gift, a uh, really great way to support uh, science. And, um, and so you can just fill out this form and uh, send that off. And we will uh, send you a nice certificate that has um, your owl's information on it. Again, great way to support our research. Um, and with that, I'll say, um, well, I see a couple more questions coming in. So, um, so I will say thank you to everybody. I'm going to turn off the live stream here in just a moment because uh, we're going to get out and do another uh, net check. And um, there goes my automatic lights thing on. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to go out and do another net check. And, um, and as you saw for the owl that we just had, um, we want to be as eff uh, efficient and expedient as possible as we, um, as we do this. And so we don't want, we're, if we catch more owls tonight, we're probably not gonna do another live stream just because it does uh, require us to hold the owl a little bit longer than we might otherwise. And so for the safety of the owls, for the benefit of the, of the process, um, we'll probably just kind of call it a night here. Um, that said, we're gonna do one more live stream uh, next Friday, the 23rd, same time, eight o'clock. And, we'll, and so if you enjoyed this, uh, feel free to um, check in with us next Friday. And, and, uh, and, and have, watch us uh, process and ban some more owls and chat more about our research. Um, let's see, uh, Maya's asking, have you ever had other owls caught and banded? So the only other owl that we've caught here at the station is a barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D, barred owl. And those are the, the larger owls that you often see, for those of you that don't know about owls, they're the ones that you often see on the power lines. If you ever drive down the road at night, especially in the winter and you see an owl on the power line, probably a barred owl. And, uh, and they're predators of sawed owls. And they're also very common in our woods. Now our nets here that we have at our station, and I, I know I said I was gonna stop, but, uh, but now I'm reminded that there's something else I wanted to show you too here, um, which is, uh, the nets. And so this is the, um, the mist net that we use. This actually gets to your question, Maya, I promise. Um, so these are the nets that you can use. It's so fine, you can hardly even see it in the camera. But if I bring it up close. That's what it looks like. It's much finer than like fishing net or something like that. And it's designed to catch birds of this size. And so, um, uh, and so if a barred owl flies into the net, most of the time, it'll just punch a hole through the net and keep on flying. Um, but once in a while, if it flies in at the right angle, we'll catch it. And so we'll have to ban and deal with an owl that's much larger and does not fit in a tomato paste can. Um, but that's the only other species of owl that we've banded and processed here. Um, the other one that's actually a potential here, uh, possibly, would be a boreal owl. 
And at the very end of the, and they migrate south just like Sawets, they just don't come down as far south. And so we are here, like right at the southern fringe of where a boreal owl could, you know, theoretically possibly maybe show up. And so sometimes in that first week of November, after we're kind of done with the Sawet stuff, we'll run the boreal owl call and do the same thing that we're doing with Sawets, but do with boreal owls in hopes of catching a boreal owl. We've never caught a boreal owl, but we're going to keep trying until we do, because that would be a, a really great record for Washington County. Okay, super. Well, have a great night, everybody. Uh, join us again on Friday the 23rd um, if you want to see some more owls and learn more about what we do. Uh, go adopt an owl. Uh, send me an email or post on Facebook if you have any other questions. And, uh, and if you'd like to join us um, in person one of these nights uh, in the remainder of the month, feel free to reach out to, um, to me uh, or us via Facebook and we can maybe we can arrange something. So thank you. Have a great night.